So what we're looking for in price action is large injections of volatility and a directional bias. The way we define our underlying market structure for bearishness, we want to see a high that's rated. Once that high is rated, those stops have been taken and or they've engineered buy side liquidity for false breakouts. There are tra traders that are trapped up here. Okay, so they have now someone on the other end of their position. So their counterparty offering buy side liquidity, but to do that, they have to be a seller. As price drops down, why would they let their book lose that profit? Okay, so we don't necessarily need a run all the way back up to here, like we'd see a high to low, and then a 62 to 79% tracement level. Because if it does go up there, this is going to get ran out, and this is going to be a continuation higher. So the context is we want to be trading as price returns back to the breaker, not waiting for the swing high to form. Now, when you do this style of trading, you'll see that you'll get the better entry points and you can wait for the swing points to form to support the idea. Okay, so there's a difference. Everything's reversed when we're below the equilibrium of the current dealing range. If we're in a discount, the ideal scenario for buying is we want to see a low that's violated. Okay, once they run those sell side liquidity, they engineer breakout artists that want to sell short on breakout and or sell side liquidity on assumed long positions in here. They're going to have a sell stop right here protecting that position and price goes down in there. They play counterparty, big displacement, breaks the high, so market structure now is bullish, return back to the breaker. The highest probable points of entry are going to have this market structure here or this market structure here relative to the current dealing range. Okay, and if you start that dealing range from a higher time frame, i.e. the daily chart, because most of the banking deals that take place by way of technical analysis and trading, they're all formed on the daily relative to the open high, low, and close. And the last 20 trading days, the last 40 trading days, and the last 60 trading days. Okay, so we had this scenario. We were in a discount. We had the range. When we're looking at ranges, we have to incorporate the wicks. And if we're doing optimal trade entries, we'd only use the bodies of the candles to get the core volume. Low to high. Here's 50. So we are in a discount. We closed in a liquidity void down into a discount. The price rallies through. This swing high is what I would look at, but you can use this one. There's no difference. Okay, inside this area here, once it's broken to the upside, we wait for it to come back in to that same area. That's this. Here's the low, previous low, right there. We have a little bit of a run. We drop down. We're in a deep discount relative to the dealing range on the daily from this low to this high. Then price rallies. It shows energy. Up here, there may be an instance where it doesn't get back down here, and that's okay. Because we're only interested in buying back down here. Why? Because there's a bullish order block at that point. It's a bullish breaker at that point. And we also return back to what level? The 50%. So now we're back at equilibrium or discount. So the probabilities increase when we use the PDA rate matrix that we learned about in month number five. Once we apply that concept, then suddenly all the swing points that form are going to be energetic. Okay, we're going to see the swing points create movement. Now, this is a daily chart. There's going to be times when we do not have a clear market structure on the daily. We can drop down to a four hour chart. If we don't see anything on a four hour chart, you can drop down into a one hour chart and nothing less than that. Now, if we take this dealing range away, because you've already outlined really what the point of it all was, we add now the new dealing range in here, because inside this parent price swing from this low to high, now we had this run here. This low to this high is our new present dealing range. Low to high, 
price comes back down into equilibrium. So this is a, again, high probability scenario. But now for entry purposes, how do we calibrate the FIB for that? Remember the pattern we used for this model was optimal trade entry. We use the bodies of the candle. We have the lower of the bodies on this candle with the open. So the open on this candle is lower than the close on this down close candle. So we start there and we drop this down to the highest close. There we are. Once you have this on your chart, all you're doing is you're going to wait for a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday to trade down into that. And we're going to stay with that bias, bullish, until this is ran out or this high is taken out. Okay. So now we're dropped down into a 15 minute time frame. Okay, so here's the 15 minute time frame for that particular week. Monday, we don't get down to the optimal trade entry. We're crouching right above that. And then finally on Tuesday, watch what happens. Tuesday, we drop down into it here. Bingo. This candle, right when it starts to show energy, what time of day is this? New York Open. So as price hits this level, you can be a buyer there. First objective is going to be what? Previous day's high. Remember, that's the targeting tool. We look at previous daily high if we're trying to exit on a long. So we're just going to drop a line on that there. And then we have the previous Friday's high. So we'll put a line on that. And then we have the Wednesday of the previous week's high. So the market should target that. Price runs up, clears that Monday's high, clears the Friday's high, retraces, runs the Wednesday of the previous week's high here. Comes back down, finds some support at the Wednesday high. Look at all the price action around that Wednesday high that we outlined. And then look at the response again, boom, takes off. Let's go back out to the daily. Okay, that's this day here. It found support at this day's high, daily highs and lows. Everything that we see that takes place on high energy movement is going to be found on a daily chart. Old daily highs, old daily lows. Then what does it do? It consolidates, it gravitates around that Wednesday high, and then another area or run on liquidity. Okay, so the higher time frame builds the, the, the premise or the bias, but we have to include this price structure in here. If we don't have this element behind price action movements, you're actually trading with a disadvantage because we have a built in um, driver for volatility because when it's in a premium and it runs a high and drops down, breaks market structure, they have traders up here trapped. They're not going to want to get back or very close to that high. So what's the benefit? They're probably going to move lower. So if they're going to be moving lower, we can sell short in the New York open. And we're only looking for one setup per week. We're not trying to day trade every day. We're not trying to scalp every day. We're looking for one specific setup. The problem is, and you're probably having that same itch right now, is I want to do more. There's nothing wrong. I'm not trying to disparage that. I'm trying to just remind you the low hanging fruit, the easier objectives. You'll be a better trader than me sooner if you listen to all the things I'm telling you to do. That underlying price structure is the key that unlocks most of your high probability scenarios. We have a low, a high, that ran. So this high here has been breached here. Then this short-term low has been breached here. We trade back to it. 
That's a sell. What are we looking for? A previous day's low. That's it. That's all you're looking for. Remember, if you just trade breaker to breaker, you have it. Because it's the accumulation, manipulation, distribution pattern.